Coming up next, we have David Morales. He's a legend of house music. He's an American DJ, producer, and Grammy Award remixer. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us so much. How are you doing? I'm doing well. You're in your I'm studio in right now? I'm, I'm in the studio. <laughs> You're based in Bologna, right? Yep. I have a studio in Bologna. Nice. Well, uh, since you're American, but you're based in Bologna, I was thinking, how do you see the situation impacting uh, the different countries differently, uh, the U.S. and Italy, since you have well, sort of a double perspective? Um, I have a double perspective about many things. Since I've been living in, in Italy, I have many um, different perspectives about the American way. Mm -hmm. I've lived in America for 50 years, so obviously most of my life. And um, and I, I have family there and friends, of course. And I, as I see, it's one, even before this pandemic happened, what I like about Italy is that, you know, um, there's more family values. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, people are more... People more relaxed, you know what I mean? People aren't stressed and on edge. And yeah. maybe that's because there's a siesta. <laughs> <laughs> well, but uh, as I watch this whole thing going on, because mm -hmm. obviously in Italy, we've been, after China, Italy was the next country that was affected. And obviously, um, you know, it's funny, I, was, I had my bags packed. I was to have a flight within two hours. I was going to America. Mm -hmm. This was uh, the beginning of March. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, for the first few weeks that we were already part of the pandemic that it was happening, you know, I wake up, you know, it's like we, we watch the news all day. You know what I mean? Because yeah. everything was changing so fast. You mm -hmm. understand? Yeah. And one hour before, I mean, the car was coming to pick me up. I said, what what am I doing? Um, because I knew that if it was going to move to America, it was just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be stuck in America in quarantine in a hotel on lockdown in America yeah. not knowing when I can come back home. Yeah. And so. I used to tell friends and, and especially family back in America, I said, mm -hmm. you know, this is something really serious. Uh, I said, I've been living it first hand ahead of all of you. I was like, this is coming your way. Yeah. And you need to be prepared. And I said, I don't think anyone can be, can be prepared for it, you know? Um, at least in Italy, people are civilized, you know? In America, they're not civilized, you know what I mean? They think that, that's like that, that a war is going on, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right, so how do you think this whole situation is going to impact the record market in the next months? Um, when do you think it will start to resume its, its course? It's, it's, I, I really, you know, I'm, it's like I'm really worried because I've had all of my gigs canceled, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you know, it's funny. Um, I have no problem staying home. <laughs> and I tell you why I have no problem. Because for the last 25 years, I had to say easily two-thirds of my year, I'm on the road on tour. Yeah. So when I, and I travel all around the world, when I go home, home is like a holiday for me. You know what I mean? So I'm the opposite of your average person. You understand? So me being on lockdown at home really was, it was really after 25 years, having a proper holiday and because for me thank god my studio is two minutes walk from my house yeah you know you know i at least i have somewhere to escape and to be creative and pass mm -hmm. some time other people i'm sorry that you know you know that they don't have that mm -hmm. the only thing obviously i miss you know i live in bologna i live in a historic center it's a beautiful city Mm -hmm. You know, so you miss taking a walk on a beautiful day. You miss going to the to the cafe and either having a coffee, um, you know, or having a beer or anything like that. You know, you know, uh, I'm part of the entertainment business, and people that are part of the entertainment business, we're in trouble right now because we're going to be the last part of the opening 
for the public, you know? Um, all my work has been canceled. Um, my summer is gone, you, you understand? So, and it's not just me, it's other DJs, it's the bartenders, um, you, know, it's, it's, you, know, you know, it's the clubs, yes. you know what I mean? So forget about the summer, the summer's gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So do, do we hope that in the fall maybe, or, or are we talking about winter? Or are we talking that 2020 is gone and we have to look towards 2021? Because it's also the mentality, I think until they find like a cure or vaccine for this, yeah. it's like, what are we going to do? Oh, because social distancing, you, you can tell a club that holds a thousand people, okay, you can only have half of that and it has to be social distancing. That just doesn't work. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? I mean, that just doesn't work. So um, I really don't know. It's like, how are people going to move forward? And first of all, everybody has been hurt economically from this. So nobody has money anyway right now. You know what I'm saying? So even when, it, when the businesses start to open up, I mean, people aren't really going to have that excess money to, spend you know, to go out like they used to. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's very scary. We're in 2020, and, you know, it's amazing how when I even, this is like, this is a different war. You know what I mean? That it, it's, you know, there's no missiles, there's no bullets, there's no soldiers. We're talking about an economic war. Yeah. Slow so, moving. Yes. Plus, everything is so uncertain. We still don't know about progress on the vaccine. If, you know, the governments keep expanding the lockdown and the, the measures. But truth is, nobody really knows anything for sure. And we're just seeing how everything develops. But it's hard to say when everything will resume its course with any kind well, of... Are, but this is for sure because nobody understands this, 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 this virus yet. So until the virus is understood... And, and, yeah. and until the world finds a way to control it, then, you know, we don't even know. It's like nobody knows nothing. So I, when I watch America, and, you know, it's funny because as I talk to people in America, I'm like, you know, you, you're not opening no time soon. I was like, I don't live, Italy is not a third world country. We're very prepared. People, you know, they, you know, they, you know, you know, they're very solid here. I'm like, if we've been going through this, I'm like, and we're a smaller country and we've had the proper testing and in every country, nobody has had enough of proper testing. Some countries, yes, have had better testing. America, it's no secret that they don't have proper testing. I have, I have family that work, that work in hospitals and what the government is telling them, the people is one thing, it's all wrong because I know for a fact that there's not enough testing. They don't have enough equipment. Um, yeah. You know, and these, and then two, so they don't even have that. So yeah. they're not even testing enough people to understand how really bad it is over yeah. there. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, we, you know, we, and, you know we, we're on our second month now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, certainly we see specific numbers every day rising, but those are just the numbers from the people that have been able to be tested. But the situation is way more dire than, than what we actually know. And um, yeah, it's, it's just... Uh, Nobody knows. My, my mother lives in Puerto Rico and people are only allowed to go to the supermarket on a certain day. The supermarket opens, let's say, oh. 7 o'clock. People are lining up at five o'clock in the morning. Wow, really? Wow. You understand? So it took time for my mother. I spoke to her today and finally said, did you get to go to the supermarket? She was like, yes, I made sure I bought enough things, you know, to last me for a month because my mother's, you know, 70 something, you know, she's in the mid seventies. She can't go and she lives by herself. She can't go to stand online, you know, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, easily when you got people lining up. So what number are you? You know what I mean? There are certain stores like, like Walmart slash Walgreens that for the, for the older people, 
they they give them first priority, you know, me to you know to be able to enter the shop to enter the shop. All right. So, aside from the global impact of the coronavirus, I was also wondering if you could talk about any projects that you're working on at home these days, musically or for your label, Darren. Well, I'm working every single day. <laughs> um, Good. You know, I'm getting a lot of uh, requests for live streaming. Mm -hmm. So I've been upgrading my studio um, for live streaming. Um, I mean, okay, sorry. This is, obviously, this is my recording studio at Pot. Mm -hmm. So this is my, my thing. This is my, this is my DJ area. Okay, nice. So I almost have like my mini musical apartment that I can escape. So I'm working is, you know, because normally when I go on tour, um, you know, I'm gone for the weekend. So I arrive whenever I come home, it takes me two days to decompress. Mm -hmm. So that means, so that means losing time. So maybe yeah. I have a couple of days when I come home in the studio and then, you know, and then it's back on the road again. You don't have the time so to. This time I've had. Yeah. I've had, because I don't even know what day it is anymore. <laughs> so um, I'm able to, I'm working on uh, on a couple of remixes and I'm working on, on two new albums. So between okay. that, live streaming, changing the furniture around, mopping, um, you know, and really I've been really spending like this past week about streaming because streaming yeah. is the next thing. Streaming is here to stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. There's been so much of it these days. It's it's almost overwhelming, but yeah, it's definitely the way to go from now on for a while. I mean, the, the worst thing for me is really being worried about my family back in the States. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, I know how I practice safe distancing here and how I'm following the rules here in, in the law. Mm -hmm. Whereas in America, you know, it's another story over there. People really don't have they're not really focused or really taking, not everybody, half the country is not even taking it seriously. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, it's like they're frustrated. And it's funny when people say, you know, well, you know, we have to get the economy rolling. I don't think there's one person in the world that doesn't want to work and needs to work. They need income. They need to pay the rent. They need food on their table. They need to feed their, you know, they need to feed their families. So mm -hmm. it's not like anybody just says, oh, we, you know, we just want to stay home and not do anything. Everybody is stressed out about okay. this. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, and it's a unique situation. You know, they don't know what it is that if, if someone gets sick and they get admitted and they, and they really like an intensive care, you may never see them again. You know what I mean? Which yeah. has happened to a lot of people around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's, that's, that's like, that's like so really... It's like, oh, it's really um, so sad. And I'm watching America, you know, that they have food lines for, for people, families, people that had, that really had proper jobs. We're not even talking about homeless people, people that had jobs, flight attendants, uh, people, you know, you know, you know, that work with businesses and, you know, they're standing outside. There's, there's, there's lines for miles and miles, like, you yeah. know, like thousands of, like over a thousand cars for mm. people to get free food yeah. for their families because they have no money. And in America, and we're talking about they're not even a month into the situation as long as we have. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's only the longer the lockdown, the worse it gets. And the more desperate mm -hmm. people will become. Yeah. So is there anything that you would like to say to your audience watching this? Any advice that you might want to give them? I, I, you know, no, nobody likes the situation. And we're all, nobody has it, okay, better or worse. I mean, some people have uh, in a, better, a better financial situation per se, let's say. Mm -hmm. But I may have been a better financial situation position in a sense because I made because I, I because I make good money traveling but I, I seems like you know many people are gonna be able to go back to work and a lot of people are not gonna be able to go back to work. Do you know what I mean I work in an industry that at the moment they're not gonna reopen in a month, two months, 
three months, maybe four, maybe five. That means no income. So everybody has to try. I know it's not easy to really try to keep your composure and in control of your frustration. You know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? It's almost like this is a test of people's patience. Absolutely. You know I mean? yeah. that, um, I think one of the, I think one of the most incredible things about this, the, I think the only positive thing that I can take away from this whole pandemic is that I think it's giving people time to sit still and reflect on life. And Absolutely. where most people, you know what I mean, you work every day, the day is the day and the life and the life moves, moves, and moves. So you never take time to yeah. just sit and reflect. You know yeah. what I mean? Look at um, what just happened and yeah. You know what I mean? And this is what is giving people time to re reflect and understand that this can, and in the future, it can and it will happen again in some other extreme. So I think if anything, it, it can help us really prepare ourselves because this can happen again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This time, nobody was ready for this, and a lot of people got caught off guard. I think mm -hmm. in moving forward, it's about being, trying to be prepared. That means financially, you know what I mean? I have to think about, you know, I have to tone down the fancy restaurants and all the extra luxuries because the luxury really is something like this. Even water is a luxury. Rubber gloves, a mask is a luxury. You know what I mean? The, the, the really cheapest things, hand sanitizer, it's a <laughs> joke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I think, you know, everybody has to play their part and really try to keep it together. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the best advice that we can give to people at the moment. Thank you so much again and take a lot of care and spend time with your lovely family and be safe. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Ciao. Bye. 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 Bye.